It's interesting, John, the writer, writes that down. It was about the 10th hour. He remembers. It made an impact on his soul. That was the moment. That was the hour when he changed from a searcher to the Bible says he went to stay with Jesus. Some people, they just want to drive by Jesus. They need him for a minute. They, they just want to drive. Hey, can you help me with this? It's a mess in here. They drive by. What are you seeking? You, you want to come stay? Well, no, I don't know if I want to stay. I, I just want you to help me with this because I can't control this part of my life right now. And then I just want to go back to doing what I'm doing. John says that we went to stay with him that day. They settled it with Jesus. And he remembered the hour that he wrote down the time. It was about the 10th hour. Any real believer here this morning, you have that hour. Now, you might not remember the time like John. You might not remember the day. You might not remember the month or so, but you have that season of time that you would classify as your hour when you went from just searching or just observing to going to stay with Jesus as your Savior. What was your hour? I was talking to a guy the other day in my office and looking to get married. And I said, oh, cool. (laughs) What? (laughs) I said, "Uh, can I ask you a question? He said, yeah. I said, "Uh, do you know the Lord? Because, you know, if you're getting married and you don't know the Lord, I'd love to tell him about the Lord. Because marriage without the Lord is not a, not a marriage with God present. And that's, a whole, that's a whole thing that people are missing. Maybe your marriage here today needs the Lord. I said, do you know the Lord? And he said, yeah. Everybody says that. I said, oh yeah? When was that? When did you come to know the Lord? And he answered. He knew his hour. He said, oh, yeah, well, he said it was an interesting thing. I was raised in a Christian home. I went to church the majority of my life. He said, I knew all the stories, and I, I, I sat in service, and I knew you know, the lingo or whatever he said. And he said, but boy, he said, just a few years ago in college, it was like I woke up. He's like, I, it's like I woke up out of a coma, and he said it became real to me. And I decided I, I want to follow Jesus. That was his hour. He, he remembered. Oh, I know what he's asking me. When did I go to stay with Jesus? When did I settle it with the Savior? That was in college for me. A guy wrote me an email a couple days ago, and he said, Pastor West, I just wanted to encourage you. It's been 10 years now since I confessed Jesus as my Savior. He said, I remember. i just given my will over to the Lord, and I, I serve with this guy all the time. He's a faithful person here at The Rock. And he sent me that. He said, I just want to encourage you in the Lord's work. And 10 years ago, almost to the day, he said, I, I was on a run. I was jogging down the side of the road, and I hit my knees, and I prayed to Jesus and received him as my savior. He knows his hour. John said it was about the 10th hour. Jesus tells a great parable in Matthew chapter 20 about a guy that owns a vineyard. What's your hour? Believers have an hour. Religious people, and this is not condescension. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to provoke a thought in your soul because maybe today is your hour. Religious people that don't have an hour say things like this. Well, I've always believed Okay, well, Andrew and those guys, they always believed that God was a reality, that the concept or the idea of God was real. But John, who was a religious man, says, I know the hour that I settled it with Jesus was about the 10th hour that day we went to stay with him. Religious people just say, I've always believed. No one's always believed. People believed in the idea of God, but when did you settle it with the Lord? Jesus tells that parable in Matthew 20. He said a guy owned a vineyard, and uh, he said, I got room for some workers. And tells his manager, go hire some guys. So he goes out in the town, says early in the morning, he finds some guys. He said, you want to come work in the vineyard? Yeah. He said, my master, he'll pay you a denarius if you work the whole day. Cool. So they go into the vineyard. Master says about the third hour. Hey, third hour is here. He said, we, we still got room for some workers. Why don't you go back out town and get some more workers? Goes out at the third hour, finds some more guys. Hey, you want to come work in my master's vineyard? Sure. Listen, he'll pay you a denarius for the rest of the day if you come and work. All right. Goes out the sixth hour. Day's half over. Hey, you want to come work in the vineyard? Yeah. My master will pay you a denarius if you work the rest of the day, half day. Okay. Same story at the ninth hour. Same story at the eleventh hour. One hour left. Goes out and he finds some guys. You want to work like for an hour? 
Yeah. My master will pay you a denarius if you work for an hour. All right. Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like that. Everybody comes in. Everybody here today came in at a different hour. I'm an early hour guy. I came to know the Lord when I was seven years old. Did I understand everything? Could I quote the Bible? Did I know deep theological things? Of course not. But I remember being convicted by the Holy Spirit, needing to repent of my sin and believe on the Lord and follow after him. I remember that. And that was my hour. I'm, I'm an early morning guy. I met the Lord young. I have no other hour story. There's some people here, you might be a teenager. Or you met Jesus when you were a teenager. You might be a teenager and God is stirring in your heart right now, this very moment maybe. 14, 15, 20 years old. Maybe you're a sixth hour person. You come into the kingdom and you say, man, I, I need to settle with Jesus and that's my hour. Ninth hour, uh, my buddy that sent me an email, he didn't come to know the Lord until he was over 40 years old. Wrote me that email the other day. He said, over 40 years old, he confessed Jesus. Sat by a guy's bedside in Genesis Hospital once. He had less than a week to live. I said, why'd you want to see me? He said, I, I need to ask you some questions about God. I said, okay, can I read you something in the Bible? He said, sure. I read him about the gospel. I read to him eternal life and confessing Jesus and all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And I said, you can't just do this because you're in a crisis, man. Do you believe it? And he said, I believe it. I said, have you ever settled this? Have you ever done that? Have you ever called out to God to be saved? He said, no, I haven't. I said, well, I would urge you to do that. He prayed right there in the hospital. Confessed Jesus as his Lord. I preached his funeral a couple weeks later. Declared him a believer to the crowd and asked him what their hour was. He's an 11th hour guy. 